Good morning, friends, and welcome back to Five Agendas. We're going to go back and have a look at a couple of thought papers, uh, starting with um, four of 2017. Oh, sorry, three of 2017 regarding Melchizedek and Abraham. And then um, 417, more on Melchizedek. Before we do, a quick um, intro. Who was Melchizedek? Seeing that Christ is our great high priest after the order of Melchizedek, right? From Psalms 110 verse four, who then was Melchizedek? Now, um, in my Hebrew Greek keyword study Bible, I have four Genesis here. when it speaks about Melchizedek. Got a bunch of stuff in the way here. So, yeah. In Genesis 14, where it speaks of when Melchizedek went out and met Abraham. Um, verse 18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Now in the um, notes here at the bottom, it says Melchizedek's identity has been hotly debated over the centuries. There have been three major viewpoints. So one that Melchizedek was the pre-incarnate Christ. Second um, was that Melchizedek was the patriarch of Shem, the patriarch Shem. And the third, Melchizedek was a Canaanite priest king. And it gives here, you know, certain information relating to all three of those. And what we're gonna see in this presentation, um, these parts that we're gonna do, is the reasons why Melchizedek cannot be just a Canaanite priest king. We're gonna see why Melchizedek cannot be the patriarch Shem. And we will see why the first viewpoint of the three listed here regarding Melchizedek was the pre-incarnate Christ. We're gonna see an overwhelming amount of evidence to that fact. So here we go. Who was Melchizedek? Reading again from Genesis 14, 18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, see, he brought forth bread and wine. He was the priest of the most high God, he blessed Abraham um, and said, blessed be the, uh, blessed be Abraham, the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and he gave him tithes of all. The Apostle Paul in Hebrews, the seventh chapter, provides sufficient information for a safe conclusion to be drawn regarding Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who made Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation. So Melchizedek means king of righteousness. And after that also, his title is king of Salem, which means king of peace. So you need to ask yourself, who else 
besides the pre-incarnate Christ can be king of righteousness and king of peace. Paul goes on in Hebrews, the seventh chapter, for without father, it doesn't say, it just doesn't have a record of him. It says without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the son of God, abide at the priest continually. Made like unto the son of God. What's that mean? Well, the decreed son of God, as you know, would appear in the context of Bethlehem as God manifest in the flesh. Here we have Melchizedek made like manifest unto that manifestation in the context of Bethlehem. Melchizedek was manifest like that a long time before, manifest in the flesh as Melchizedek who came forth to meet Abraham and brought forth bread and wine and blessed him, right? It says here he abides, abideth the priest continually. Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Consider how great he is. Even Abraham paid him tithe, a tenth. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So Jesus came out of Judah. Moses didn't say anything about the priesthood coming out of Judah. And yet it is far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. Christ, our great high priest, after the similitude of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7, 16, who is made not after the law of a carnal, there's the, that's the Greek word sarkikos, which means commandment, but after the power of an endless akatalutos, indissoluble life. So carnal, and fleshly, it was made. So not after the law of a carnal or fleshly commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Here, Paul is giving you the credentials and the truth surrounding who Melchizedek was. Um, so, Verse 16 is related to birth lineage. That's from Thayer's. Here's that Greek word, sacrikos, from the RSV, who has become a priest, not according to a legal requirement concerning bodily descent, but by the power of an indestructible life. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And insomuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. Now, what um, needs to be brought out is verse eight of chapter seven. And here men that die receive tithes but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. Okay. Let's keep that text in mind because we're going to come back to it. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. There are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. So there were many priests. Why? Because one had to take the place of the other after he died because they weren't 
to continue because of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. So from the Levi, the Melchizedekian priesthood. Those priests had succession one after another because they died. But this one, he's special, Paul is saying, of whom it is witness that he liveth. And he has an unchangeable priesthood. And he wasn't made high priest after that fleshly commandment, like the Levitical. But this one was by the power of an endless life. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Indeed, the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. That's from the RSV. The word of the oath, which came later than the law, after the law. The conclusions we face are inescapable. The obvious facts are, one, Jesus Christ is, right, the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, when he was five, six. Now remember from the videos we did on the two immutables, Hebrews 5, 5 and 6, um, so the first immutable in Hebrews 5, 5, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. So there's the son by decree. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Verse 6, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That's the second immutable thing. So the first immutable regarding him being decreed a son. Second immutable, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And so, you know, in the original, when there was no chapter breaks between Hebrews 5 and 6, when you get to 6.18, well, 6.17, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of this counsel. So there's this counsel, counsel piece that was between the two of them, which resulted in, all right, my son, this day have I begotten thee. And um, the second immutable thing, confirmed by an oath, okay, that by two immutable things, the counsel and the oath, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have is an anchor of the soul, but sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunners for us entered, Jesus, made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So here you have your two immutable things, the counsel being the first and the oath. Counsel, thou art my son, the oath, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. But here in Hebrew seven, it says the word of the oath, which was after the law. Interesting. The second immutable, the word of the oath, because the first was the council, the peace between the two of them, the first immutable thing, thou art my son, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The second immutable thing concerning us, you know, him being his great high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, says the word of the oath, which was after the law, make it the son who is consecrated forevermore. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? 
through the eternal spirit. Okay? Because remember, God was manifest in the flesh. He emptied himself of the form of God, the eternal spirit. And so the eternal spirit is the spirit of Christ. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I'll send another Elos Paracletos, another comforter. And yes, this has everything to do with the Godhead and why Melchizedek was the pre-incarnate Christ, the word, the Logos. Fact number two, Melchizedek, king of Salem, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. It doesn't say here. It's just not recorded. We don't know who his father was. We don't know who his mother was. The, his record of his birth is lost, wasn't written down. We don't know it. It doesn't say that. It says without father, without mother. He is without descent. He is without a beginning of days. He is without an end of life. Abideth the priest continually. Because he retook that former glory. Melchizedek. If Melchizedek's identity consists of a mere earthly priest of the Most High God, a man, he would not have been suffered to continue by reason of death. This would place Paul's entire epistle in an untrustworthy position, making Paul very naughty for stating, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days or end of life. So who was Melchizedek? Right? So here, for our next video, we're going to start going over some of the evidence that was presented in the March and April 2017 thought paper on Melchizedek. So please stay tuned. See you next time. God bless.